Morning YouTube. Welcome back to my garage here. Uh, I thought I'd do a little video to follow what's turning out to be my uh, surface grinder rebuild. As you can see I got most of it broken down here. Now I didn't expect this to be a a rebuild video or any video at all. Uh, I expected to just knock this thing down, clean it up, give it maybe a fresh coat of paint just to keep it clean and uh, started having fun with the thing. But as I've been breaking it down, I've been running into some somewhat nasty surprises. Sort of the first giveaway was the uh, the table itself. The table itself would bind as it got to uh, the ends of its travel, which is never really a good sign. But uh, part of me deep down was hoping that it was just the grease and the grit and all that stuff that accumulated over the over the years of maybe poor and proper use. Um, I stayed optimistic through the thing. I also noticed that the uh, the the locks didn't lock anymore. So these are just the locks that come through and press on the dovetails and lock two of the, the three axes. Uh, again, the optimistic side of me thought it was just, you know, maybe a minor adjustment, but it turns out you can uh, squeeze these uh, locks all the way down and it still won't stop the, uh, the table. Number three, let me see where this, where this was here. I found that the, uh, the grease, the oil fittings, the, the, essentially what look like the grease connectors, let me find those. These classic sort of zerk fittings. On all points of the table where these were present, the table was packed full of grease. Now you may be able to sort of forgive someone for pumping grease into what evidently looks like a grease fitting, but then when I made it over to the uh, to the knee, let's see if we can see this here. The knee very much has uh, oil cups, and the oil level here in the week or so that I was been able to play with this grinder really never changed and uh, at first I thought that was a good you know I was relatively optimistic I thought hey this thing's got you know it's not wicking up much oil there's not much wear in there well it turns out the oil cups were also packed full of grease packed hard enough in fact to make it into the ways through all the grooves so between the grease packed machine the worn out locks I got a bad vibe very quickly and I mean the price wasn't bad on this it is you know a 50 60 year old machine um, I think when we buy these things we're always hoping to you know get a low mileage machine you know great deal add it to the shop add a little bit of capability and, and again the whole point is just have some fun um, I think with a little bit of detective work I've done so far and I've done some measuring I've actually already done some work on this table and we'll see some old video um, I'll insert it, you know, sort of after this intro and show you how I got to, to where I am so far. Uh, so there might be a little bit a jump in timeline. The first step is going to be to rebuild this table and uh, the matching part of what I'm calling the saddle here. And uh, I plan to go through this video, th go through with this video to the very end, you know, whether this turns out well or not. Now, I'm not a machine rebuilder. I haven't even stayed in a Holiday Inn Express, but I did get an A in geometry back in high school. All right, maybe it was a B. Let's go with B. So just before I get into the older footage, um, just to get everyone up to speed, uh, there are some preliminary measurements here. They're probably hard to read, um, but I've gone to sort of some great lengths to prop properly map the wear in this. Um, as, as best I can tell, the top surface is still good, meaning it's flat, no bow, no twist, no warp. I'm going to use that top surface as my reference surface. And one of these, I think this, this is the back face, so the mag chuck would go here with the rail. Uh, this looks pretty darn good too, so I think I'm going to use these two reference surfaces to reestablish the dovetail geometry here. Um, 
once these are reestablished, this will become my master, and I'll use this to bring in the, uh, the corresponding geometry. Now, what I found is that uh, I had about 10 thou wear across the length of this. This is, I think, 24 inches. I, I've milled that off, and you'll see that in a, in a second. And now I've just mapped out islands on the high side. That's my zero point there. This is the some original surface here. And I'm about 2 thou higher on this side. I've now mapped that into half a thou steps. So everywhere you see that line, there's a half a thousandth difference on this side. And what I think I'm going to do before I even ink this or try to print this on the plate, I mean 2 thou is a lot. What I'm going to do is is I, I think they call it step scraping. I'm going to take out, hit this 2 thou, then step out 5 thou more, or sorry, half a thou more, step out again, repeat that a couple of times while I watch this, and when I get within, I don't know, 3, 4, 5 tenths of this zero, I'll start to work the other side. Once, you know, on my surface plate I can measure that to within some reasonable amount of flatness, then I'll actually start with the, uh, with the printing or with the spotting on the surface plate. And uh, the intention here is to, keep, is to get this flat and just as important, maintain parallelism with the, uh, the top surface, you know, with the surface that the chuck is mounted on. All right, so welcome to uh, what is probably the scariest thing that I've ever done in my shop. I'm about to uh, skim cut the surface grinder table. So you saw me try to clean the surfaces up, and I've got this mounted belly side up, clamped down to my table. It's not exceedingly tight. I'm not taking that much off. Uh, I'm going to set this up on a tripod and try to explain sort of the reasoning behind um, or how I sort of talked myself into this. So this isn't the freshest uh, mill in the world, and originally I was going to send this out and have it done, but I figured since I was going to bite off more than I could chew, I just might as well go the whole nine yards. Um, what I'm trying to do here, or what I've done here, is with the table mounted, with the surface grinder table mounted on the mill table and the indicator um, in the mill, I've basically repeated the same measurements I've done on the surface plate and I've noted the differences. So the differences between the surface deviation I was getting from the surface plate and what I'm measuring here is I think the wear in my mill. So when this table goes all the way to the left and my cutter is working on this end, the three or four thou difference that I'm measuring now compared to the surface table is the amount of wear and just slop I have in this table. So this table's picking up an additional two to three thou uh, when all the weight's down on that end. So I'm going to try to take all of that into account. By the time the weight shifts, so the, the wear in these surfaces isn't linear. So if it's zero here and ten here, it's not five here. Five is like out here. So it's it's very sort of nonlinear wear. On the mill, by the time the weight gets back onto the knee, uh, that happens before I get into this sort of highly accelerated area. So I think I'll be able to pull away, you know, a surface milled to within, I don't know, I think 3 thou of, um, of my final flat target surface. And uh, that's something I'm willing to try to scrape in as opposed to trying to get this, this 10 thou out by hand from scratch. I, the other thing I've also done is, you know, cleaned and lubricated the ways of the machine everything that's not moving is locked very tightly um, so hopefully this turns out well and I plan to just skim again to within about three thou of that surface I don't want to I want to err on the safe side and uh, maybe try to leave that center uh, where it is though I'm at three here 
there's that three thou difference between the, the back and the front. So I may pick up some skim marks here if if the math works out. Uh, just a quick note too, if this uh, somebody notices how weird this cutter looks. It looks weird because it has oversized inserts mounted in it. I put these in and I checked the bottom with an indicator and um, I think I'm close enough for government work. Uh, the reason I did this is I need a small enough um, cutter to get around, you know, to take advantage of the whole travel of the table and get around the uh, clamps that I have. And I want to stay far enough away from the end of the actual travel of the table because if I get too close and I wind in too tight or come in too fast, I can cam this table up uh, when it sort of binds at the end of its travel. And so this is just an extra, you know, quarter inch of insurance in either direction. I wouldn't recommend doing something like this, but I think these cuts are, cuts are going to be light enough in cast iron that I should be okay. All right, so that was a little scary. Uh, I've got the uh, bottoms of the dovetails cleaned up. I don't know how well that comes across. There's still, I haven't even cleaned the uh, cast iron off of there. I left, I don't know, maybe a half inch wide by six inch long um, piece of the original, and I think that's eyeball, and that's probably a few thou below my final surface. Um, I suppose this is sort of the moment of truth. I'm going to take this, move it over to the uh, surface plate, and uh, see how close we came in to our 3 thou target. Before I do that, though, and I take it off this table, this is, I'm, I'm going to just uh, use a depth gauge on the four corners. Um, I've actually already done this, but I just want to write this down. Uh, mark this on the ways themselves. Now the table globally is flat, but you know, if, given the size of the tip of that uh, depth gauge and sort of the local havoc that is at the top of my table, it, I mean that's that's easily within. It's easily beyond the three the three thou window is sort of shooting for here. But anyway, just as a, as sort of a a feel good check, I'm going to go ahead and do that and mark those down. So I've taken the four measurements, and again, likely totally meaningless, but hey, baby steps. Um, anything to, to build my confidence as I go. Uh, so this is basically what I did, if you see the depth gauge there. Um, so the measurement in this corner is two inches and 12 thou. And that was two inches and 22 thou. Um, so that's the the 10 thou that we, we milled off, we measured and milled off. On the back here, I don't know if you can see that, probably can't see that micrometer reading. Anyway, it's, it's 2 and 11 and a half, so an extra half thou came off that back corner. Over on this side, we've got the same reading, 2 and 11 and a half, and this is our low spot, 2.0095. Again, I don't know how much of the table comes into that. It's probably a few thou off because of that, but so far it's uh, feeling positive. Let's take it over the surface plate, see what it has to say. The depth mic readings on the mill was a complete scam, meaning it was fortuitous result. Right? I'm, I'm actually measuring uh, three and a half thou. Uh, variation over the whole surface, but it was complete coincidence. Um, 
the local error in the mill table is just too much for that. Anyway, I think I have an exciting result, albeit a bit confusing. I sure have some weird wear in my mill. So this is still my lowest point at zero. And you see this little island here is uh, is about one thou below at the uh, at the worst. Now this is a tenths indicator. I don't know if you can see that with that glare. This actually isn't the right contact arm for it. So this is giving me yeah, about 10 or 12 percent higher readings than than are actually true. And I checked that with some with some gauge blocks. So it's not really three and a half thou. It's a uh, it's three thou. But I'll I'll show you what the wear pattern looks like now, or the sort of the surface maps too. Calling this zero. As we come to one end, we're dropping. We drop a thou here. We drop to a thou and a half here, and that's you know the droop I tried to accommodate for in the mill table. As we go to the other side, you'll see something very similar. Though I get a flat spot through here, this is all pretty consistently zero, and at the end it dips down to almost you know minus a thou eight tenths. The other side is still staying a little bit higher, so that's two thou higher on this end. I stay high, though I mean it's it's drooping a little bit, and then it droops a little bit more. Um, Twelve tenths, I suppose. Uh, not droop, but uh, eight tenths droop from two thou. Here it stays high. This is all relative to that zero point. Here it drops down again. So that's again, it's very much that. The droop in the table, though, it's a little bit more complicated than I expected. So the largest deviation is from this corner. Um, one and a half thou below zero to this two thou mark in the center. This is relatively isolated, but it's still there. And that's what I'm calling a thou and a half uh, total discrepancy. Again, the contact arm isn't exactly right one, but it's all relative here, so I'm going to call that 3 thou. And uh, it's a lot better than the 10 to 12 thou I was measuring before I went through this. So again, a uh, sigh of relief, and I feel a little bit more confident about scraping in, you know, or getting through this 2 thou. We'll work it down to that surface, and we'll, we'll get to that um, in due course. Okay, so I'm doing some very uh, fast and rough scraping. You can see some very long strokes. Um, this is about four passes. This point here, our zero is still here, untouched. This point here was two thou. Um, I don't know if you can read that. Uh, it's about a thou and, I don't know, three tenths, four tenths. Now I'm not gonna show, you know, a, the gory scraping details here just to keep the video of a decent length. Uh, but there's plenty of other guys out there on the internet better at this than I am. Um, I mean, I'll throw in some shots. This is, I'm doing the same old pull scraping you guys might have seen on the, uh, on the straight edge video that I did. Um, I've sharpened the scraper so it's a little bit more round nosed, so my roughing cuts. Uh, are a little bit deeper. And then when I, cr I come across, I can really see material moving. I'll show you what that scraper looks like in a minute. But again, I've been step scraping. I haven't made it all the way to the end yet. This height's low, so I'm staying away from there. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So if right there, we're at about, let's call that one and a half, just for argument's sake. I'm gonna sweep this down till I start to average sort of in the one thou area, and you might still be able to see the blue that was down there from the previous. Pass, and I'm going to mark that again. I'm going to do the same thing over this way. This side was a little bit longer. And so it's down in here. Oh. It's 
So it's, it's about one thou. There. Let's find the other side of that. That's coming up. One and a half. Say about there. Again, this is very rough still at this point. It actually climbs back up, huh? All right. Well, that, I mean, that's that's good. So about this area, maybe is still one thou. So now what we'll do is come in and take another pass here. So we'll only scrape that area and we'll try to get it close to this. Uh, this is the one thou mark, uh, below the one thou mark. This is a little inflection point because you see we're below. I'm going to keep working that and hopefully this line is going to keep walking over this way until I get to a point where I can cross over and then start, you know, I have the surface all down within a few tenths, a few tenths, um, let's say to within a thou or so to where I can actually start printing on the plate. Yeah, by printing I mean spotting, I suppose that's what they call it. Alright, so here's the scraper. I don't know, it's the same one from the sort of that handmade pull scraper. Uh, and it's just a brazed on uh, lathe turning insert kept square with the uh, uh, with the pull direction. And it's probably hard to tell, but I broke the corners off. I mean, I rounded them off. <laughs> this actually is a broken edge from an old, uh, from I don't know what happened there. And there's just the slightest bit of crown on that top surface. I don't know if this thing is going to autofocus. And that's just on a high speed steel. It was an old woodworking chisel. And I'm using this geometry to sort of rough in and get down as fast as I can. You know, it's to where I can start to actually uh, develop a consistently flat or flatter surface. Now, because this is such a thin surface, um, I mean, it's about an inch. I mean, it's good because. You know, it's quick to scrape. Um, it's a little tedious because you have to be a little bit more controlled. I'm staying a little bit away from the edges. So that scra if this scraper comes off the edge, I mean, it'll take off a lot more than I'm hoping for it to take off. So the stroke, just by the nature of the, the short run I'm going through, has a little bit more power in the center. Um, I mean, as I'm going through this, I'm trying to keep it as consistent as possible. But I expect this to be slightly low in the center just because of the caution um, that I'm using sort of towards the edges. And uh, once, once this gets down to the general area, I can start coming with a smaller one and uh, pay a little bit more attention to those edges. Anyway, let's go 45 back the other direction. I'm still at that blue line. I don't know if you can see that. I haven't gone through that. These are, this is the last pass scraping marks. In fact, these feel smooth from stoning, and these are rough, just fresh cut. All right, well, the surface is uh, slowly coming down. Um, this now is it's still my higher area. I'm mixing it up a little bit with a, this Anderson style push scraper. I feel a little bit more confident again towards the edges. You can see the so the difference in scrape marks there. Um, but I need to power this down another five tenths to start to get into uh, a reasonable surface here from the uh, from the as milled. So I'm going to work through that, and uh, hopefully next time uh, I show you this, 
we'll have a good reference surface number one. Okay, so on this uh, front rail, my high spot's sort of moving around a bit on me, and I, I think that's a good first sign. I haven't gotten to actually uh, bluing yet. I'm just using some, uh, some Sharpie here to keep track of where I've been. Um, I'm trying to get, so this side is now half a thou below that zero point, and that's about where I want to stop. I think that's a thou low. A thou low, a thou and a half low. This end is eight tenths low. So I think this is still the machine surface. I think I can sort of knock this down, you know, a pass or two with the with the scraper. I'll get this within the rest of this surface, and then I can start um, spotting this. At least I know I'm pretty close to within maintaining parallelism without you know chasing my tail, trying to print at this stage and then iterating a gazillion times. Spotting and scraping has started. This is, uh, I think, about my third, maybe my fourth pass. Um, Those things are probably impossible to see. Anyway, good start. Um, it's looking positive. Couple of low spots. You can see the bald spots in there with they aren't picking up any ink. So I'm going to call this done. I know these things probably don't tend to come up very well in video, but uh, to the best I can measure, I'm flat and parallel to one about within about three, probably four tenths across the whole thing. Being honest about it, <laughs> but a uh, world is different compared to uh, where it came from or where this thing started. So I'm going to call that good for now, or good for this part of the video. Next step. I think I'm gonna attack these dovetails. So this one's gonna be a little, it's gonna be a little tough. That's only about a half inch tall and not a, spa a lot of space to really work in. And the other side's got a key that needs to be straight, uh, gib that needs to be straightened out. Just for fun, here it is back on the saddle. I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's that tenth out that. We took out, can you guys see the light in that joint there? These two surfaces previously were perfectly lapped together. And there should be another identical gap over here. There it is. Just a quick end view, that's where the key will be fitted. And uh, I checked this out with a little, some shim stock, and there's only about 3 thou left above these dovetails. So by the time we machine out the, the matching 10 thou on the bottom, we're going to lose our clearance at the top, so that will have to be machined off. Anyway, that was expected, but sure and steady she goes.